So, welcome back to another episode. And this one is interesting to me, it really is. I'm going to talk about a game that I find fascinating. I really find it fascinating. And my fascination with this game began nearly 20 years ago, like in 1991. I picked up this Famitsu magazine, and I, I think I've shown this in a few of my episodes. And, I, you know, in flipping through it, I was, you know, I got to see a whole bunch of games that we never got over here. And it's so weird. I've seen this so many times. This was a two-page uh, spread that I saw all those years ago. And I was like, what is this? It's like an RPG on the Famicom. And I'd never ever seen it. It looked like sci-fi or whatever. And I'd never never seen it. It never come, it came out over here, obviously. And I was always fascinated about it. And this is where I first learned about it. And it was called Lagrange Point. And I was like, what the hell is this game about? I've always really been interested in it. And I'm just going to give a plug that there's an English translation of the Famicom game. And I'll put a link down below to that English translation. And a big thanks to Aeon Genesis for doing the translation. I always big props for all these guys and gals who spend their free time translating a game for free just so people can play it and I think it's a wonderful thing and I'll always plug this types of things because the game never was released over here and the game was released in 1991 by Konami on the Famicom and what's interesting about it, it was near the end of the NES days, you know, the Famicom days in Japan and the next generation systems like the Mega Drive and all that were starting so this game came out at a very unusual time but it was very very advanced, it's probably one of one of the best RPGs on the Famicom that was released. And why I find it fascinating is it's sci-fi. It's a sci-fi RPG and it reminds me a lot of Fantasy Star and I think that they were heavily influenced by Fantasy Star in creating this game and to me that's only a great thing. Now what does this game have going for it? First of all it had a special sound chip. The VRC7 uh, sound generator chip or circuit. And this gave the game some incredible sounds, some sounds that you never got on the Famicom back then. And uh, there were, the sounds are a lot deeper, that kind of stuff. But the music is quite memorable. It's, it's very, very good for the Famicom of that time. This sound chip basically uh, was, you know, gave the ability to do that, and that was that's something interesting. It's kind of like back then with cartridges, you had to do a little bit more because sometimes the the systems themselves, the sound wasn't it was okay. So they would do stuff to the uh, the cartridges themselves to make it a little bit better. So that's what they did uh, with this, and uh, it creates for some definitely memorable music. So the game has a very sci-fi storyline. It takes place in the 22nd century where mankind has colonized space. And they've created two colonies, Land 1, Land 2, and an artificial satellite. And one of the lands has gone, uh, the, the communications disappeared. They, they can't reach them or anything like that. So, uh, And then a little bit later, they lose all communication with all of these things. So they send you, and you are the main character, and you've got to go investigate the colonies and figure out what has happened and why did communication break down. And as soon as you get to the colony, the RPG elements kick in right away. So you get attacked by robots, mutants, alien-esque creatures, and you don't know really what's going on. And uh, you're going and talking to people in the colony. And this is one thing that's really interesting about it, is the way you were able to get around the colony. You can walk around the passages and uh, through the laboratories and stuff like that. But later on, you can get uh, different vehicles for, you know, getting really around the colonies. Because the colonies are quite huge. So that's one thing that's really interesting. You get like a little car that drives around at one point. So hard RPG elements kick in, lots of combat. Now, this is a staple of all old school RPGs in the Famicom, on the Mega Drive, and the, all those old systems back then is lots of combat. There is a lot of combat, but what is it kind of like? It's kind of like Dragon Quest. It's, it's got that same kind of thing, but one thing that's interesting about it is that 
you can make your own weapons using fusion techniques. So you can get different pieces and put them together, create brand new guns, that kind of stuff. So there's a little bit of customization that way. I even believe there's 10 playable characters. There's quite a lot of characters. And, and the game is very stereotypical RPG. You're buying weapons out of stores, talking to people for information, getting clues, getting items to unlock other areas. It's, it's the standard fair RPG. But I think what sets this apart is I love the idea of sci like a sci-fi RPG. Like, the one thing that the Famicom had, we had Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, so it ca captured the, kind of the medieval stuff. We had uh, Earthbound or Mother on there, which kind of had the real-life RPG kind of thing going on. And then we had a sci-fi RPG that we have never heard about and we've never gone. And that's really why I want to come and talk about it. It's like one of the forgotten gems of the Famicom and a game that's never come out here. And I think I would have... What I wouldn't have given to have played Lagrange Point back on the, the, the NES uh, in, in near its later life, that would have been incredible. Could you imagine? A few things in gaming could have been very different now. I, I would have loved to have seen that game flourish and do well, but you know, RPGs were still a very niche thing. They didn't want to take a, a gamble on that, which is yeah, something I guess I can understand. But the wonderful thing is you can play the game in ROM form uh, with this translation patch. And I will 100% plug this and stand behind it. I think it's uh, a great thing that people nowadays can play a game from 1991 that would never come out here. And you can experience and see what it was all about. So I'm also fascinated because it was kind of inspired a little bit by Fantasy Star. I really like the sci-fi elements of it all. So anyways, guys, I just want to come in and talk about Lagrange Point. So anyways, till next time.